Hey everyone, welcome to another Jeff the IT Guy video. Today we're going to be finishing, for a time being, our Indeed Web Scraper series. And so in this final, we'll say tutorial, we're going to take everything that we've learned, which would be the Python, the MySQL, and now we're going to mix it with PHP, and we're going to output this onto a web page. And the PHP is going to build for us a table with the data from the database uh, from the data that we've collected right and so in this video like i said this is going to be a culmination of everything that we've learned and then just an output of what you can do with it so in case you wanted to get this information put it on a web page you can do that it's also a way for us to look to see how you would use php to pull stuff out as well as learn some stuff about loops while loops uh, associative arrays and things of that nature. Also in this video, I'm going to only capture the screen. I'm not gonna capture my face in this video. And then based on some feedback that I've gotten, I'm gonna really focus in on making sure that you can see uh, the code that's being typed um, very clearly and make sure that really that's gonna be the centerpiece of this. So that as you're following along with everything, you can watch this video and you can create some PHP code of yourself or a web page for yourself. And so I hope you enjoy this video. And as always, if you like these things, if you want to learn more, um, if you're looking to you know, learn some new skills that's really gonna better you in the future for you know, employment and things of that nature, as well as reviews and looking at how you can use cheap things to hopefully learn a new skill, uh, then go ahead and subscribe. And like I said, as always, I hope you enjoy the video. So let's go ahead, let's switch over and let's get started and let's take a look at this code. So here we are, now we're in the Raspberry Pi. Uh, first thing we need to do now is we need to get to the HTML folder on our Raspberry Pi. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna type in CD space period period, then CD space period period. This is gonna take us to like the, the root directory. You hit LS, you're gonna see a lot of stuff. You type in cd var slash www slash html. And what this stands for is change directory. Go to the folder var. Inside of that, go to the folder www. Inside of that, go to the folder html. And so this is the folder that Apache uses uh, for independent web pages, things of that nature. And so what we need to do is we need to create a web page. And we're going to call this web page index.php. And so inside of the HTML web folder, it needs to be either uh, index.php, index.html. You know, this is, you can do your other stuff, you know, if you were creating web pages with Java and things like that. But Apache looks for index.php or index.html. So we're going to say sudo nano. We're going to call it index.php. So now that we've created this file, we're just going to type in the, uh, you really don't have to do this, but you can, the tags for PHP. And we're gonna create some variables. And so we're gonna create the variables for our MySQL connection. And so we've got off the host, which for example, if you follow the guide on uh, how to set up your Ras Raspberry Pi as a web server, it's localhost. You know, your user, um, for me, it's going to be root. You would never do this in a production environment, you would create users that had their own individual permissions to your database and you would never use the root user. Now we're going to create the password and for our password, our password is relatively easy. Um, you would not create a password this easy in a production environment as well. And now we need the database. So which database are we going to use? And so our database is scraper. So there we go. We've created the variables that we're then going to use in the MySQLI function to connect. So we need to create a variable called con, you can, or whatever you want to call it. And this is going to be equal to MySQLI underscore connect. And inside of this, you're going to put the variables for your MySQL connection. So it's going to be host, then user, then your password, and then the database that your table is in. And that, our table happens to be in the scraper database. And so this creates the connection. Next thing we want to do is we want to create our query. And so I'm just gonna call this SQL. 
and we're gonna select and we're gonna there's only two columns in this one if you followed along with the guide so we're gonna select the job and the company from indeed that is our table and the reason that I'm not just using select all here is because whenever we use the associated array it works better whenever you actually um, use the names of the columns you can also use as here if you want to do it that way um, just to make it a little bit easier next thing we're going to do is we're going to create the result uh, variable and so this is going to be equal to mysql i underscore query and this is where you put in your connection variable and your query variable or your sql variable that's what i meant this is where you put in your sql variable and so it's going to be a result next thing we're going to do after that is we're going to create a while loop yes a while loop in 2020 um, so this while loop is going to say while and then there's a variable we're going to call it row and we're going to use the function mysql underscore fetch underscore asoc and what this does is this puts it it fetches the query data and puts it into an associative array that's then linked to the variable row and we need to put our result variable in here we're going to close that up and then we're going to open do our brackets for the while loop and inside of here we'll say echo and then what this does it's kind of like print and python it just puts it on the page we will say echo the row variable and then brackets and then you put in the name of the column and so what this does is every time this while loop executes as long as there are results it will print the job and the company as their own little separate variables so what we're going to do now is we're going to save this so you just hit Control x and then yes and save it and we're going to go to our web browser and we're going to go to localhost as you can see we now have output but it's not really legible it's it's not you know easy to use now this would be a great way though if you wanted to use these variables for some other function but for what we're doing you can't use this it's not good so what we're going to actually do is we're going to go back into our code and we're going to set it to we're going to write some code to where the php actually creates us a table and this is an html table and so what you need to do is you need to echo and inside of that we're going to put table that's the tag for table right so we're going to echo this table and then inside of that we're also going to echo <clears throat> a table row like so and then we're going to give it a table uh a name um which is table header i do believe yes table header like so and so we'll just say job close that up well, say do 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 table header company and then we'll close up our table row tag like so we'll close that up and so this is actually going to echo out these tags it's going to put this dynamically um, dynamically is probably not even the right word to use here it's going to build the table using PHP. So. All right, let's check it out. Let's make sure it works. So control X, hit Y for yes. Go to our Chromium in this instance. And so we'll just hit F5 here. I'm just going to say, hey, we're not working. And you're going to go back in here. You're going to be like, what? Not working. Why is that? And that's because I haven't closed up my table. So it doesn't know what to do, which is completely fine. Also helps whenever you close stuff up like this. You gotta make sure you have all your tags. And so next thing we're gonna do is we're actually gonna go into the while loop here, and we're going to create a little bit more uh, PHP to you know do all this good stuff. So <clears throat> as you can see. We've already got a little bit of it here, but we're going to echo and we're going to echo another table row or TR. Okay, 
So we're gonna echo that. Yoki. And then we're going to echo inside of this, we're gonna echo a table. T this time it stands for T D. Um what we're gonna do. So this is like the data that goes into it. And so we're gonna echo this out, close those tags, and we're gonna use a period to concatenate. And so inside of this, this is where we're going to put our variable and everything like that. Like so. Come out here, we're gonna put another period and we have to close it up. So I'm just gonna say parentheses. It's not parentheses, double quotes. Close up that TD. Oh, another double quote, boom. Go out here. And we're gonna just really repeat the same thing that we just did. And so we'll create another TD here. Use period for concatenation. Go here, do another period, another double quote. Close that tag up. Like so. And then below that, we're going to echo out our closing table row tag, like so. Make sure you get all the, all of the double quotes. Okay, that. And then the next thing we want to do is we want to close our table down here. Okay, so everything now for our code is done. So now we should be able to go in here and hopefully create everything that we need it for it to create. So let's save it, Control X, hit yes. We'll go back to Chromium, hit F5, and there we go. Now it's in like a little nice little table. And as you can see though, there's not a border of any kind. So let's say you wanted to put in a border. Go back to your code. Go here where we create this table and you can say border is equal to one. Go back to F5 and as you can see now it's got a border around it or you can leave it as not a border. And so now the data that we have pulled from the Indeed web scraper is in our uh, is there a web table? I mean, this is pretty cool and you can do this with a lot of other things. Um, this is somewhat of, a lot of people probably say an antiquated uh, way of doing it. However, this is, you know, just a way to do it, right? You can build it differently. You can use bootstrap and things like that. Other uh, PHP and go in and build it to where it works like this, but you don't have to build the table uh, using PHP to build an HTML table. This is how they used to do it back in the day. Um, but it does get the job done. It's a quick and dirty way of doing it. And so I hope everyone has enjoyed this video. I hope you learned some stuff from this and stay coding, you know, go out and learn some stuff. There's a lot of really cool things that you can learn if you're if you're into php you know you can learn stuff like you know symphony um <clears throat> larvel uh stuff you know all that good stuff so hope you all have a have a great day hope you're staying safe practicing social distancing and continuing to learn in this time of quarantine uh stay tuned for more videos coming later guys